So I was working on this radio and uh, used a little tool that I have here that I use very frequently, and I thought it would make a good video for people, a lot of people that may not realize things like this even exist. So if you work on electronics, and especially if you're modifying stuff, uh, a lot of times you need to figure out what value resistor or capacitor you need to install into a circuit to modify that circuit to work like you want it to. So it can be anything from an AGC circuit, you know, an automatic gain control circuit, um, AMC, ALC circuits, because honestly, a lot of times, like in the case of something like this, a, a, a transceiver or a two-way radio, sometimes the manufacturers will have the AMC circuit, the timing not set quite perfectly, and it's, yeah, it just doesn't work that great. And you can do the math on paper, and especially if you're working on a complex circuit, that can get really complicated. That's all. It can be a lot of math, just be very time-consuming where it would be really simple to just plop in a different part and see how it reacts. But the problem there is there could be 50 different resistors that might work better in that circuit, but you'd have to put in and take out, put in and take out every single one of them. So that's where little devices like these come in. They're called substitution boxes, and they don't have to be this small. I've got, God, probably three, I think three sets of these old Heath kits, um, I've got several different sizes. I've got little smaller ones, more modern ones. I mean, I even have big old... Here's another one of my favorites. These are probably, between this and these two here, these are the ones I use the most. But here's an old Sencor Substitutor. Um, now, the advantage of this one is um, it has now lower wattage. This is half watt and one watt carbon resistors in here. Actually, there are no longer carbon resistors in this. I completely restored this, so all these resistors were replaced with metal film resistors. Um, now this has, and this is what's really handy about this one, it has uh, 20 watt wire wound resistors on this switch. So, really high power resistors. Um, it has normal capacitors here, along with uh, a couple diodes, and then the big advantage of this one is electrolytic capacitors. So uh, this has 450 volt rated electrolytic capacitors in it. Now originally this had just two multi-section electrolytic caps. It had a bunch of wires coming out of it. Of course, that was a custom-made capacitor for these things, so it was just replaced with a bunch of individual electrolytic capacitors. But still, when you're working on old tube type stuff, if you've got, you're trying to track down, let's say, an AC hum, you don't have something handy like an ESR meter. So you don't have a really fancy modern-day ESR meter. Well, you can just take an electrolytic capacitor, hook up the test leads to the electrolytic cap on here, um, hook it into circuit across your suspect capacitor. You're just adding it in parallel, and if the hum goes away, well, you just found the cause. That's, you know, the capacitor that you just paralleled this capacitor across is obviously either bad, or it's just not a high enough value to filter out all the AC ripple voltage, let's say. But, um, and you can pick up, now the Sencores bring a little bit more money because they are bigger, have, they're a little bit more fancier, where these little guys right here, you can pick these up on eBay, um, public auctions, I mean, just all over the place, and honestly, they don't usually go for that much. Um, now, the one thing I did do was I upgraded uh, the terminals on here, so I just happened to have, God, I've got a few hundred of them, I think I got a huge lot of them one time, uh, the double banana that are double insulated plugs, but uh, I installed those on here, took the original jacks out of here, but uh, other than that, I did, res did restore these as well, so that means all of the parts inside of these got replaced. So, actually, I can just pop them apart. It's only four screws holding these little guys together. I'll just take apart this one here, and I can show you that just like the Sencor Substitutor, where I took out all the original carbon film resistors, I installed all metal film resistors into this one. And there you go. All brand new. Okay? And they're all 2% resistors, so higher tolerance than the resistors that were originally in this, because I think the ones that were in here were, at the best, they were probably 5%, but they may have been 10% in it originally. So, not only are they uh, a film-type resistor, which is going to be, yeah, it'll, they'll outlive me, <laughs> tolerance-wise, um, they have a higher tolerance, 
Um, but like I say, it's, you can pick these things up cheap. Now, you don't have to replace all the resistors when you, if you get one of these old ones. Honestly, a lot of times they're fine. It's not like those resistors, are, they're, they're not in a circuit in something that's being used every day. So they're usually fine. I just, I, yeah, I'm one of those people. I, I get something like this. I just rather replace it all with brand new components um, and know, and then, you know, I label it what's in there. So, you know, this has metal film, two watt resistors. They're rated to 500 volts and they're all 2% resistors. Um, and then I, you know, calibrate it. I check it. Once I get it all done, clean the switches, make sure all the resistors are then within 2%. And then, you know, I, I put these on a two year life cycle. So, you know, I calibrated this back in November of 2017. Um, and I'll re, I'll retest it again, November, 2019. And honestly, a hundred years from now, it'll probably still be fine. But, you know, in the case of this radio, what I was doing, and what made me think about doing this video was, so this is a Uniden Pro 810E. It's an AM sideband radio. I had to tear the front of the radio apart. Now, the customer had asked about putting LEDs in this radio. Now, this is honestly one of those ones where if the lights work, yeah, you really, it's, because it is a pain in the butt. There'll be a whole separate video on working on this radio. But getting a faceplate out of these radios is just a nightmare. But if you do have to take it apart, like I did, because it had some physical damage, I guess the radio got dropped, I had to take it apart to get in to it. Well, it has two lights right here, and they were originally incandescent light bulbs. Well, if I've gone through all the trouble of taking this thing apart to get in this far, I'm definitely going to put LEDs in there. So, if you're replacing an incandescent light bulb with an LED... LEDs operate at much lower voltages, so you're always going to have to install a series dropping resistor to lower the voltage to that LED. Now, how do you figure out what, what you need? Well, there's, there's a formula for that. It's actually fairly simple, and there's also, God, probably dozens of online calculators. You can just go to the Google Monster and type in... LED resistor calculator, and it'll take you to page after page after page of websites where you can figure out what resistors you need to install in series with your LEDs. But the problem with that is, for starters, you need to know, or you need to have access to the data sheet for the actual LED because the voltages and the current that these, that you'll need those two things. You need the operating voltage and the current for the LED to use those formulas. A lot of times you may not have those. If you bought some assortment kit from China, well, there's really nothing wrong with those LEDs, but you just don't have a spec sheet on them. The other problem is that spec sheet is setting the brightness of that LED at its maximum brightness. Well, you may not want it at maximum brightness. And when I install LEDs in something like this, a meter, I don't want it at full brightness. It just makes the meters, they look goofy. They're just way, way, way insanely too bright. Um... The light bulbs, especially that were in this radio, the original light bulbs, were very dim. It was just meant to add a little bit of backlighting to the meter. So I don't want to install LEDs in this thing that are just obscenely bright. It's going to make the radio look goofy. So how do you figure out what resistor value you need if you don't know <laughs> what voltage you need to operate it at? You know what the maximum voltage is. Well, that's where one of these little critters comes in handy. So the easiest thing for me to do here was I just took out the two light bulbs. I knew which terminal was the, the positive and negative one here, so I just installed the LEDs. I removed, now luckily this radio, and you know, you're not going to have this in every radio, but this radio had dropping resistors in series with the two light bulbs already to, to reduce the, the, in the intensity of them so they weren't as bright. Well, that was really convenient for me. Because that made installing LEDs really simple. It was just a matter of put the LEDs in, remove the original two resistors, then I just soldered a wire lead into the holes where one of those resistors originally was. I just took my substitution box, I reached over here, just reach over here again and grab them. Grab myself a set of leads with croc, you know, alligator clips on them clipped onto those two wires that I had poking out of the, the board, set this to an extremely high resistance, way higher than it would ever possibly need. To, you know, basically, if I put it on 10,000 ohms, I know the light's not even going to light because it's, it's going to drop all the voltage inside this box, basically. And then what I can do is, is just slowly just keep turning this down until I got to 1,000 ohms, and I was like, 
yep, that looks good. It's just about the right brightness. So that's what I've done. But like I say, the little box here made it very handy. It was easy for me to just install this thing in series, in circuit, turn, keep turning down the resistance till I got to my happy spot. I was like, I was happy with that intensity. Then I could just pull out two 1K resistors, pop them in there, and get this thing turned on. We now have LEDs, and it looks it looks extremely bright in the camera. Honestly, this camera gets blinded by bright lights extremely easily. It's really not that bright. I'm looking here. It looks you can't even see anything in the middle there. It's so white. In person, it's not that bright. <laughs> but that was the point of using this. I could I could sit there and play with it until I found the brightness that I wanted. So. Yeah, get out there. Like I say, you see these things, and it doesn't have to be Heathkit. They don't have to be Sencor. Um, now, you don't need... Now, like in the case of this one, I have two watt resistors in here. Um, it's kind of like this substitution box here. I have all the capacitors that are in this thing are rated for a minimum of 630 volts. Um, the reason I... And the same thing with the voltage rating for these. They're 500 volt uh, resistors. The reason I do that is is because I work on tube type equipment. And working on tube type equipment, I'm working on circuits that are in the several hundreds of volts. So I need the components that I could be substituting in a circuit to be rated high enough. But honestly, if you only work on solid state stuff like this, uh, some of the more modern ones you can get. And of course, you could build one of these. You, you saw what was inside this box. It's just two rotary switches. That's it. Just a wafer switch with a bunch of... you. Know, a resistor installed across every position. That's that's all it is in there. And it's the same thing inside this one. This one just has a bunch of ceramic or uh, uh, film-type capacitors in there at each one of the switch positions. Um, but like I say, you can get little small ones like quarter watt and half watt. Um, I, I like my resistor boxes to be two watt. Um, that way, if I'm doing something where I need, need to drop a lot of voltage... Um, you know, it's really going to be dissipating a lot of heat. If I was using a quarter watt or a one watt, you know, half watt or even a one watt, it might burn the resistor up. Where if I'm using two watt resistors, that gives me a little bit of headroom. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, pick yourself up a, a couple of these things. Um, if I had to suggest which one would I, I'd get first, I'd say the resistance box. You'll probably use that one the most, um... Because, like I say, resistors, they're mainly used for you know, current limiting and voltage dropping. And that's your radios, anything is filled with those. But if you're a tinkerer and you're modifying circuits, this is probably the one you'll find that you'll use the most is the resistor substitution box. Um, the capacitor box, you'll probably use more for troubleshooting than you will modifying circuits. It's handy if you're suspect of a capacitor being out of spec you can easily add another capacitor in parallel because when you add capacitors in, or when you install capacitors in parallel, the capacitance adds. So, you know, you could tack one in to circuit, you know, again with your test leads. And it's going to be rough because you have to remember test leads are going to have capacitance all of themselves because it's two wires in parallel beside each other. But, you know, the values inside of one of these things, you can see they're extremely high values. It's not like there are, you know, five picofarad capacitors in here. You can see that we're talking 0.1 microfarad or 0.068 or, you know, wh whatever we happen to have in here. But, uh, like I say, they're handy. They don't cost that much if you get used ones. Now, some of the newer ones, especially the resistance boxes, you can get really high-precision ones. They're nice to have, but like I say, I, you know, I've got one. I just really don't use it that much because I'm usually using in circuits where I want a higher wattage resistor. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's something to consider to add to your bench. Um, they're handy. They honestly save you a lot of time if you do this kind of work a lot where you're modifying circuits. It doesn't have to be LEDs. Like I say, it can be anything inside of a circuit where you might want to try a different resistor value. Nothing saves time more than just being able to flip a switch compared to having to install a resistor, take out, install another resistor, take it out, install another resistor, take it out. You can just hook it up to this box and go blink, 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 blink. Up oh, there, it's working just like I want it. Look at the box. Yep, 150K. There's the resistor value you want. So I hope this little video helped somebody out. Uh, so get out there and get yourself some substitution boxes. You'll you'll probably find they'll be a lot more helpful in uh, working and modifying stuff than you ever thought they could be.